Take one man on a mission of vengeance. Let him stalk a brutal, unknown killer in a town of strangers. That's our story. Dead Ringer, taken from the files of John Steele. Adventurer. <laughs> Hello, friends. This is John Steele. We're back this week to bring you another story of suspense and hard, fast action. So turn down the light, get a grip on that chair, and hang on. This week's tale takes us out to the blistering sands of our own western desert where I first met Bill Allen. But here he is to tell you his story himself. Bill? You know, home's a funny thing. When you're there, you never appreciate it, but every mile you get away from it, it starts looking better and better. At least that's the way it was with me. I'd had a fight with my pa, and I'd been away from home for 15 years, but somehow I'd never really been out of touch with the old place. Every week, pa had the Canyon City Herald sent to me, and every once in a while, I'd get a hankering to go back, but I kept putting it off. Then one day, something happened that made up my mind for me. The Herald said pa had been shot dead, and his killer had got away. I took the train to the nearest depot, bought a horse, and started the three-day ride across the desert to Canyon City. I guess it was about the middle of the second day. The sun was out and was hot as blazes. All right, come on, boy, now. Keep your head up. Okay, okay, fella. You want to rest? We will. Seems to me you've been resting more than you've been walking. All right. Go on, take a stretch for yourself. <sighs> What's the matter, fella? I'm hot, too, you know. If you'd use a little of that pep when I'm on your back, we'd have been in Canyon City by now. Huh? What's the matter? Okay, okay, I'm coming. Don't get hot under the saddle. I don't know why you just can't take it easy like any other horse. It's you, you got to go run. Huh? Hey, no wonder you was fussing. All right, take it easy, mister. Wait till I get you rolled over. Oh. There. Water, yeah. All right, just take it easy, fella. All right, there you are. Hey, 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 not so much, not so much. <coughs> Sand. Huh? Sand. Yeah, plenty of it, huh? No, no. Sand. Well, you just lay back and rest. Sand. Yeah, I heard you. Now, you leave everything to me, I'll have you fixed up in no time. <coughs> Mister. Hey, mister. Hey, he's dead. Oh, must be identification on him someplace. Yeah, no, not here. Well, maybe the back pockets. No. Oh, yeah, yeah here's a wallet. Let's see his money. He must have cards. Oh, yeah, yeah. Caleb Baxter, Butte, Montana. Montana? Why not? Yeah, why not? Did you ever play a hunch? That's what I did. It just seemed to me that if Pa had enemies in Canyon City, I'd do a lot better if I changed my name. I took his guns off him and buried him there in the desert, and from then on, I was Caleb Baxter. I got into town late the third day and headed for the only hotel. I figured if Bax had been a stranger in Canyon City, he'd have stayed there. If I got past the desk using the name, I could get away with it anywhere in town. I signed the register, and the clerk looked at it and just handed me my key, and that was that. So I cleaned up and headed over to the bar across the street. Mr. What'll it be? Uh, whiskey straight. Yes, sir. Whiskey straight. I'm telling you, Wendy, I ought to run you out of town. What'd you say? I said I ought to run you out. Right out. now, you couldn't walk anybody out of town. What's more, run away. Well, <laughs> that was the worst haircut a man ever got. Well, now, I'm telling you, Sam, them shooters had a tough time getting around the corners on that square head of yours. <laughs> now, you listen here, Wendy. Uh, Mr. I whiskey. All right, uh, leave the bottle. Yeah. yeah. What's going on down there? Oh, they're just kidding old Wendy. He's a town barber, has been for years. 
Yeah. Windy Thompson. What say, mister? Uh, nothing. I ain't gonna take it no more, that boy. Right, right, you right. made a fool out of me for the last time. No, 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 wait a minute, Sam. Wait now, get minute. back. We was just a fool. This right? thing was loaded. Hey, don't you think you'd better... Hey, any of you, uh, any of you guys know Windy Thompson? Uh, yes, sir, mister, that's me, that's Well, I've me. been looking for you. Uh, what for? Well, you see, a partner of mine come through Canyon City a few months back. And you gave him a haircut. Well, now, mister, any time I He can said give you, you oh. were the worst barber west of the Big Bend country. He, well, what? And if I ever got out here, I was to get his quarter back or have your hide. He did, did he? Well, he I... was right, mister. I'm telling you, that man should be behind bars. He does something to a head of hair. That's yeah. what I heard. Now, look at me, for instance. Uh, would you mind putting that gun up? Makes me a little nervous. Hmm? Oh, oh, yeah. Well, now, look at me. I ain't got much hair, well, but... It appears I... to me like Windy owes you one on the house. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, he sure does. What'd he say, Wendy? Uh, okay, okay. All right, now supposing you and me have a drink. Wendy. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. Yeah, and don't you forget either. Yeah, yeah, sure, 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 sure. Uh, whiskey? Sure, sure. Uh, about that partner of yours. I don't remember cutting any... I just made that up. He, he, you what? Hey, Sam, Shut he... Shut up. Uh, huh? Don't you know when you're well off? <laughs> Guess I ought to thank you. Well, somebody had to do something. Yeah, uh, what's your name? Baxter, Caleb Baxter. Yeah? Well, thanks, Baxter. It was mighty fast thinking, young man. Hmm? Howdy, Mr. Clements. Hello, Wendy. <laughs> Baxter, Mr. Clements. He runs a town paper. Oh, hi. Baxter. Yeah. Baxter, you from around here? No, I'm a stranger in town. Oh, I knew that name wasn't on the subscription list. No. Say, uh, you might be able to help me, Mr. Clements. Come on, we can talk over at my table. Go ahead, kid. I'll wait for you. Okay. <laughs> By all rights, I should be mad at you. Oh, why? Well, you took a good headline away from uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, what can I do for you? Well, I, I want to talk to you about Jed Allen. What did you say your name was? Caleb Baxter. What do you want to know about Jed Allen? Did he have any enemies... No, none that I know of. I heard there was a couple of people around that had it in for him. Possible. Came in town quite a bit, didn't he? No, Jed stuck pretty close to the ranch. Uh -huh. Did he own his place? Never heard he didn't. What's on your mind, Baxter? Nothing. Is any strangers in town? Mm, well, I haven't seen any. What do you mean by that? Well, there was a rumor going around that someone was living in the old Benson place. Where's that? But, uh, uh, it's just a little shack south end of town. It was just a rumor. Well, thanks, Mr. Clements. Uh, look, can I drop in and talk to you again? Anytime, Baxter, anytime. Thanks. Wendy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, come here a minute. Yeah, uh, what's up, kid? Do you know the old Benson place? Sure. Will you take me to it? Yeah. Let's go. Come on. About a hundred feet down the road on the right. Okay, thanks. I'll wait here. Sure like to know what's going on around here. Mm -hmm. You dirty low. Hey, what, what happened? Somebody took a shot at me. Where'd you come from? Over by the shack. I took a couple of him, but I don't think I hit him. Hey, there he goes. What? Come on. Yeah. All right. All right, which way did he go? Headed out of town. Come on. Yeah. Oh, oh, no use, kid. Oh, oh, it's too dark. Lost him. Yeah, yeah. All right, might as well head back to town. Next morning, I went over to the Herald's office and told Mr. Clements what had happened. He suggested I go out to the ranch and talk to the old Mexican woman that had kept house for Paul. Seemed strange riding out that road I'd been over so many times as a kid, just as if I'd never been away. The prairie was lying hot and dusty under a broiling sun, not a breath of air stirring. Then I come over the rise by the split pine. There was the ranch, nestling down in the hollow under the big shade tree. I rode through the gate, past the spring house, with the moss on the roof, and on up to the hitching rail. All the hands must have been out working the herd because there wasn't a living thing in sight. There was no way to come home. Mother! 
Madre mia, I am coming. You have to break down the door. Hello, ma'am. What do you want? I'd like to come in and rest a bit. <laughs> it's hot riding. There is water at the spring house. Uh, well, it's more than that, ma'am. See, I'd like to talk to you. Who you are? Uh, Baxter, ma'am. Caleb Baxter. I do not know you. No, no. I, I, I want to talk to you about Mr. Allen. I am busy. Go away. Oh, please, ma'am. See, it's kind of important. All right, all right. You talk. Can I come in? Madre mia. Thank you. What are you looking at? The room. Nice room. Stay out of there. I won't hurt nothing, ma'am. Stay out. Please. Look, I'm busy. What do you want? How long did you work for Mr. Allen? Ten, twelve years. These his guns? Leave them alone. Okay. Nice man to work for? Senor Allen. See, si, good man. Yeah, I thought so. Never get angry. Never. Yeah. Everyone his friend. <laughs> See. It's his picture over the fireplace. Nice looking man. I don't know who could do this thing. No, no, don't get upset. He was so good. What's your name? Maria. That's better. See, that's what I wanted to talk to you about, Maria. See? Si. Was there anyone who'd kill Mr. Allen? No. No one would kill Senor Allen. Somebody did, though. Now, think, Maria, have you any idea who might have done it? No one. Any of the ranch hands? No. Anybody in town? No. Think, Maria. Please. You go now, please. Okay. Such a terrible thing. Why do not someone do something? We will, Maria. We will. I'd counted on Maria giving me some kind of lead, and instead I'd got nothing. The killer's trail was as cold as a mountain stream. I didn't know what to do next. On the way back into town, I stopped in at Wendy's barber shop. I needed somebody to talk to, and he was as good as any. Howdy, kid. Be doing it, Jiffy. It's okay, Wendy. No hurry. Sit yourself down, Caleb. Find a couple of good gazettes there. Thanks. <laughs> so then I said to him, Mr. I don't care what you have to say. I don't think Canyon City needs a new highway. Why, if it puts one of them concrete racetracks through our town, why, there's no telling what kind of furniture it'll be getting around here. Why, I said, I wouldn't vote for it if the governor herself came down here and said, Wendy, Canyon City's got to be put on the map. No, sir. I said, don't count on me. And he gave me a lot of hocus pocus about being behind the times and such. And when he was all through, I said, Mister, I still feel the same way. That'll be 25 cents, Joe. Thank you. Nice talking to you. Okay, kid, you're next. You remember Joe from the saloon, don't you, kid? Yeah, sure. Hi, Joe. Hello, Baxter. See you tonight, Joe. Yeah. What'll it be, Caleb? A uh, haircut and leave me something to comb. Ha <laughs> just don't you worry. <laughs> Got something to tell you soon, Joe's leaves. Uh, said I see you tonight, Joe. Yeah. You look through the new gazette? No, ain't had time. Don't know why he can't buy his own. Hey, you see this one on page 17? Good as last month? Better. Huh? <laughs> oh, well, uh, let me see. <laughs> Thank God you're right. <laughs> hey, Wendy, how about my haircut? Huh? Oh, oh, sure, 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 sure. <laughs> you ought to see that one. I did. Huh? Tell me, what's this about a new highway? State's been trying to put it through ever since the war. But it's just like I was saying. Don't the townspeople want it? Ah, oh, some does and some don't. You see, they... Bring a lot of business to town. That's what Mr. Clement says, but uh, you say he was leaving, Joe? No hurry. I don't go to work till five. Ah, thinks a barbershop's a public library. And for two bits, too. Clements is right, you know. About what? The road. Oh, well, they're putting it up to a public refer, uh, public uh, referee... Mm, refer, uh, referendum? Huh? Yeah, yeah, vote, vote. Sure to be beaten, though. Why? Well, for one thing, the ranchers don't want it. They swing a lot of weight in this town. Yeah, I guess they do. Well, and be seeing you next month, Wendy. Gazette they... don't come out till the fifth. <laughs> Being on the sixth. <laughs> See you, Baxter. <laughs> yeah, so long, Joe. Thought he'd never go. Forgot my I... hat. <clears throat> yeah, sure, sure. Be seeing you. Oh, yeah, sure, <laughs> sure. <clears throat> oh, what you have to tell me? I've been thinking since last night, kid, and I figure you went down to the Benson place looking for somebody. Yeah. Well, I put two and two together, and since that's where the Allen killer was supposed to hit out, I figure that's who you're looking for. What if I am? Well, Mr. Clemens was in for a haircut about an hour ago. You know, been cutting his hair for years. He likes a little off the top What'd and he on say, the side. Huh? What'd what? he say? Oh, oh, well, uh, yeah. Well, he said the Allen killer was back in town. You sure? Yep. 
And he was seen riding out towards the Allen Ranch this morning. Clemens said that? Yeah, yeah. Hey, where are you going? I'll pay you later. If Clemens was right, I must have passed the killer on the road, only he'd seen me coming and ducked into the mesquite till I'd gone by. If I hurried, I might still catch him out the ranch. I put the leather to my horse and rode her hard as she'd go all the way out. When I topped the rise by the split pine, I reined up and looked down on the buildings in the hollow. Everything looked the same. The hot afternoon sun was beating down on the barns. The hands were still out working. Nothing had changed. I looked over at the hitching rail, but there wasn't any horse tied up there. I rode through the gate and on up to the house. Maria! Maria! That's a lot. Maria! Go away! Open the door. No. I gotta talk to you. Go away. Look, I don't want to frighten you, Maria, but if you don't open the door, I'm gonna break it down. What do you want? I just want to talk to you, that's all. You talk. What's a gun for? You talk. I'm coming in. No. Yeah. No. Now, give me that gun. No. You... Are you crazy? You might have hurt somebody with that thing. I don't know nothing. Please, you go. Now, look, somebody was here today. Who was it? No one here. Yeah, I know. He's gone. But who was it? I tell you, no one here. You're lying, Maria. I tell I'm you. I'm not leaving till you tell me who was here today. Please. Or maybe you're covering up for somebody. I do not understand. Are you? Please. No one here. Could you be telling the truth? See, si, see. Si. But doesn't make sense. You go now. Well, I'm sorry I frightened you, but what are these? No. Picayunes, huh? Pretty strong cigarette for you to smoke, isn't it, Maria? Please. Wasn't here this morning. Whose are they? I don't know nothing. Okay. Okay, Maria. But now I got something to work on. I rode back to town with a pack of picayunes in my pocket. They weren't much of a lead, but it was better than nothing. All I knew was that the killer was somewhere in town and he'd been out to the ranch. That was all. As I was tying up in front of the hotel, Windy came running out, waving something hey, in his hey, hand. Hey, kid, where you been, kid? Huh? All Ned's been busting loose in this here town. What do you mean? Here, here, look at this. What? Headline, read it, read it. Killer to surrender tonight. Sure, go on, go on. Harvey Clemens, editor of the Canyon City Herald, was contacted by the killer of Jed Allen this afternoon and was arranged for a surrender to Sheriff Steele at 6 o'clock this evening. It is requested that all citizens remain indoors. Yeah, what do you think of that, huh? What time is it, Wendy? First extra the Herald's hat. What since time I, is it? Huh? What time uh, is it? 5.30. Come on. Yeah, where are we going? To the Herald. But the paper says... I gotta that... see Mr. Clemens. What part? I gotta see him, that's all. Well... Come on, inside. Mr. Clemens. What? Oh, hello, Baxter. See the paper yet? Yeah. What do you think of the news? It's good. Yeah, we've been looking all over for you. Knew you'd want to be in on it. Yeah, I was out at the ranch. Glad you got back in time. Where are you going to meet him? Out at the Benson place, quarter to six. It's 5.30 now. I was just leaving. Uh, Mr. Clements. Yeah. I know this is a big feather in your cap, but, uh... Will you let me bring him in? Well, I, uh... Yeah, I got my own reasons for asking. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it'd be all right. Thanks. Won't be coming up to work now, will you? No, I didn't say who'd meet him. Supposing he don't show. He'll be there. He's tired of running. Wants to give himself up. All right, come on, we better get going, Wendy. Sure, sure. Thanks again, Mr. Clements. See you at the sheriff's office at six. Right. All right, we got ten minutes. Let's go. There it is, up ahead. Yeah. They told you we had plenty of time. Uh huh. Never saw a fellow so head up. Shh. Huh? Keep your gun handy. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Anybody here? What time you got? Uh, 20 to 6. I'm not here yet. Huh? Well, now, come on. Let's have a look around. You take the back room. I'll take the front. Closets and everything. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like it. Find anything? Wendy. I haven't been here but pack rats. Oh. 
What time is it? Uh, 17-2. Well, we gotta wait, that's all. <laughs> Not even a box to sit on. Why, when I was... Try the to... floor. Huh? The oh, floor. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. sure. Uh. <coughs> What's the time? Uh, 16-2. And if you're gonna sit He's there... He's gotta and... come. He will if you stop watching the clock. Mr. Clemens said quarter two, didn't he? Yeah. Huh? It's time. Shh. I don't hear nothing. Maybe his watch is wrong. Yeah. Where are you going? I can look up the road. What time you got? Uh, 12-2. He's not coming. There's lots of things. If he was going to be here in the next five minutes, we'd see his horse by now. He's not going to show. Maybe he's Come on. Himself. Come on. Where are we going? First, I'm going to make a phone call. Then we're going to the sheriff's office. <laughs> Folks, sure read the paper. Yeah. Not a living soul on the street. No. Uh, who'd, uh, who'd you call, Caleb? I can't tell you yet. But uh, where are Later, maybe. Wendy. Huh? When we get in here, no matter what happens, I want you to keep that lip buttoned. Sure, kid. Sure, sure, sure. Well, let's go. Remember, Wendy. Yeah, sure, sure. What time is it? Uh, six o'clock. There's your man, Sheriff. What? Wendy. I'll take those guns back, sir. Sure, Sheriff. Yours too, Wendy. Go ahead, Wendy. Oh, what? I... I told you he'd be here at six. Yes, Mr. Clemens. You ready to sign a confession, Baxter? Yes, sir. But this is... Shut up, Wendy. Just one thing I want to know. How did you know it was me? Easy. Right after you took a couple of shots at Mr. Clemens last night, he called me and told me he was sure the Allen killer was in town. Went out to the Benson place this morning and took one of your slugs out of the wall. I got the ballistics report from the county seat this afternoon. It matched the slug we found in Jed Allen. I see. Uh, do you mind if I smoke, Sheriff? No, go ahead. Uh, well, I haven't got one on me. Uh, you got a cigarette, Clemens? No, I smoke cigars. Have one of mine, if you like. They're pretty strong, though. Pick a So <clears throat> then you were out at the ranch this afternoon. Yeah. I told Maria to be careful. You might be back. How'd you know I was out there? Mr. Clemens told me. Well, you ready to sign? Yeah, yeah, uh... You want a good laugh? I've been running all over the county chasing a killer. And you know who I've been chasing? Me. What do you mean? Never mind right now. Just one thing more. You said Clements was sure I was the Allen killer. Is that exactly what he said? What difference? Yes, he... he said he was sure. Well, didn't that strike you funny, Sheriff? Well, why should it? Why would Mr. Clements be sure I was the killer when he'd never seen me before in his life? I'll tell you why. Because... Excuse me. Sheriff Steele. Yes, he's here. Just a minute. For you, Baxter. Oh, thanks. Hello? This is Miss Howard again, Mr. Baxter. Yeah? I have the information now, but it's confidential and we can't release it. It's mighty important. I'm sorry. Well, maybe if I let you talk to the sheriff. Well... Uh, sheriff, this is Miss Howard of the State Highway Department at Phoenix. We're wasting... Just a minute, Mr. Clemens. Hello, Miss Howard. Ask her if she'll give you the information. Can you release this information to me? Yes. I see. Mm-hmm. I see. Well, thank you very much, Miss Howard. Yes. Yes, you betcha. Thank you. Goodbye. Uh, let's get this over with. What were you saying when the phone rang back, sir? Well, I said Mr. Clements was sure I was the killer because he was the only one in town who knew I wasn't Caleb Baxter. What'd you say? That's right. And he was sure I wasn't Caleb Baxter because he's the only one who knew the real Caleb Baxter. Oh, that's crazy. And he knew the real Baxter because Clements hired him to do the shooting. When he saw the initial CB on my holsters, he knew I was carrying the guns that had killed Jed Allen. Why would Mr. Clemens want to kill Jed Allen? Because I Mr. don't care what that woman said on the phone. It isn't against the law to own a construction company in another town. It's a free country. Anyone can make a bid Mr. on... Mr. Clemens, the woman on the phone didn't tell me anything. She said the information was confidential and couldn't be released. Well, the whole thing's crazy. Clemens well, I... here had Jed Allen shot down because he was against the new highway and Clemens was bidden for the construction contract. He said he was guilty. Why don't you lock Just him up? Just a minute, up? Clemens. 
Have you any way to prove you're not Baxter? Well, sure, I... Sure, I can do it. You betcha. I knew all along who he was. Maybe I forget faces, but I never forget a head of hair. Why, I cut his hair when he was just a little shaver. He's Jed Allen's boy, Billy. Thanks, Wendy. Hey, it's crazy, I tell you. You can't prove a thing. I, uh, I talked to the real Baxter on the phone this morning. That's impossible. He's dead. Yeah, go ahead, Mr. Clements. Finish what you're going to say. Don't anybody move. Put that gun up, Clement. Sure, when I get about 20 miles between us. Yeah, I know Baxter's dead because I loaded his canteens with sand. Oh, you dirty... Look out, kid. Get, get back. I'll kill you. You no, no, no use, kid. I'll break your... Get n- back, I said get back. Uh, well, that's better. I want to kill you for that. Where's Winnie? He ducked out. <laughs> Too hot for him. <laughs> now, where were we? Oh, sure. I had Jed Allen killed because he was always getting in my hair. But if it hadn't been for him, I'd have made a fortune on that highway. He got just what was coming to him. Now I'm clearing out of here, and when I go out that door, I don't want either of you to make a move for one minute. So long, Sheriff. That's... (laughs) Allen. Come on, Bill. There he goes. Come on, get home. He let the horses go. Wendy, what's the matter with you? He won't. Are you crazy? <laughs> he won't get far. Come on, cut it out. <laughs> Here, look at it. Give me that thing. <laughs> it is. <laughs> what is it? It's an, em- it is... <laughs> an empty bottle. Hair <laughs> tonic. <laughs> Can you put it in his... <laughs> yeah. In his canteen. <laughs> <laughs> Title, Dead Ringer. The story of a man whose search for a killer led him to himself. And friends, if you like Bill's story, why not come back next week? I'll have a man whose very life depended on a single blade of grass, not ten feet from civilization. I like to call it Juniper Bush. So until next week, this is John Steele saying, A life of adventure is yours for the asking, wherever you find it. Only don't look for it. It may find you. Well... Goodbye and good hunting. John Steele Adventurer is produced by Robert Monroe, written and directed by Elliot Drake. John Larkin was heard as Bill. Also in our cast were Bryna Rayburn, Earl George, and Howard Kane. John Steele is played by Don Douglas. Musical effects were created by Doc Whipple. Your announcer is Ted Malley. Remember, next week, Mutual presents Juniper Bush, another story of suspense and action from the files of John Steele, adventurer. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>